Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to OLC TV for some more Mandate of Heaven DLC for Total War 3 Kingdoms Perfect Start series as Liu Bei. Now, Liu Bei was actually the character that inspired me to make this series in the first place, because for those of you that have seen my uh, Liu Bei Let's Play, he has an interesting start where he's on his own, he doesn't have Guan Yu or Zhang Fei, as you can see, there is no special characters that he starts off with, and he has a comparatively weak militia army. But the looters kept running away from him, um, which I found very, very strange because as you, for those of you who have seen my Tao Tao or Sun Jian Perfect Start series, they sort of throw themselves at you suicidally. So I ended up wasting turns chasing these armies across Northeast China. Um, to the extent that I've been playing catch up ever since. So I've spent more hours than I would care to admit trying to put together what I think would be the perfect five opening moves to really solidify yourself as Liu Bei. Now, Liu Bei, similar to the uh, Rise of Warlords 190 start, he specializes in unity. As it says here, playstyle is companionship because ultimately all Liu Bei is looking for is love. Um, so he gets to unify people from the beginning, providing you, you, your relationship with them and everything else is correct. Um, he can um, confederate Han Empire settlements pretty much straight away. Um, so yeah, it's, it's the same rough idea of playstyle as the 190, except like Tao Tao, you start off with no land to speak of whatsoever. Um, which means that you have to find land somehow, but I'll explain how you do that in the game. So, let's get into it. Xiongxi 那些曾忠于汉王朝的诸侯皇后和宦官们争权夺利作乱朝政却与平民无异此人是我的良师益友 Okay, so unlike uh, Cao Cao and Sun Jian, you are very much stuck in the Mandate War. You can't afford to ignore it. 
So this is all building up to how we deal with the yellow turbans. But, virtuous idealist, born of a poor family in Jua County, you lost your father at a young age. Although a relative of the imperial family, you had to weave straw mats and sandals to support your family. While somewhat disinterested in studying under your mentor Lu Zhu, you love to hunt and play music. Now you seek to serve the Han in any way possible. So we need to travel the lands in service of the Han, and don't be quick to take territory and you will be rewarded for your services. So yeah, I have tried this out just going gung-ho and taking territory. It really isn't as effective a start as waiting. Uh, waiting, if you're efficient about it, will get you better rewards. So I do advise you follow these. So, mission issued. Liu Bei senses a change in the air. The roads around your village have become dangerous for travellers. A local colonel, Zhou Jing, has asked you to join the ranks and help fight a band of rebels who have been causing trouble. So we need to fight Bu Xiang, who is the standard rebel at the beginning, and we will get 1,000. We have the support of Zhou Jing, which is very nice. And we have, you know, a pretty solid militia army, but we do have some Yi marksmen who are pretty good. As far as ancillaries go, we have a, uh, a red thoroughbred and a... Here we are, Clay Dog. I didn't realise we had a stone pig as well, how lovely. Um, I'm not going to give Liu Bei that because he has someone pop along later who will appreciate that more than he. But, first of all, as always, baby's first battle. I'll see you in there. And here we are, and you can see he has two sets of axe bands and himself. Uh, ahead of us. That's not going to be particularly difficult for us to deal with. Of course, his axe bands are better than our G militia, but the cavalry in the back and some archers to soften them up, it's going to be simple. We do as well have this huge advantage of the reinforcements. Don't be afraid to let them do a lot of the fighting for you. You have a militia army, you have no land. Don't take the casualties if you don't need to. So what we're going to do is exactly what I suggested. We're going to let Zhou Jing deal with it as much as he possibly can. And here they all come. He has Axe Bands himself. Axe Band against Axe Band. That seems to work for me. And we're going to ship our cavalry off to do a little bit of scouting. Just to help. And move these chaps just a tiny bit forward. Obviously with the uh, G Militia in front, just in case they get charged. But we'd like to support him with some arrows if we possibly can. Oh, here he comes. Now, the big man here doesn't have his very nice shiny matched Jin. Um, you know, his legendary weapons yet as well. So don't be rushing ahead to get him into duels like you might with Cao Cao or Sun Jian who actually have um, proper weapons. This guy has a ceremonial sword. So we're going to take him off dueling, just in case anybody wishes to threaten him. This is baby mode, Lu Bei. He does not need to get into a fight. He's not the greatest fighter at the best of times. That's why he had Zhang Fei and Guan Yu to do his dirty work. Right. I think we're going to fall back over this way. You guys can shoot, though, because you can shoot whilst you run. So head forward, lay some arrows into them. And we're going to let Zhou Jing come out of the woods and create problems. Come on. Arrows into them, please. Let's swing back this way. See if we can uh, encourage them round. You can head off to the north. At least I think that's the north. Yeah, there they go. There they go. They're coming round. And they're losing a serious amount of men, despite the fact they have shields because ye marksmen are pretty good. Right, keep heading round. You boys can sit there. They're already beginning to run because they see they're surrounded. Uh, Liu Bei is getting overconfident. And you chaps, if you wouldn't mind, just coming up here to support. I was hoping that was going to be an AI versus AI duel. But it's not. That's a shame. They're sort of walking past each other casually. Uh, you boys just keep heading around there. You boys can move up here. Right. That's what we were waiting for. 
As soon as they've gone past this axe band, we shall move in to just chop them up with our saber cav. Come on, Zojing, do something more useful. Right, now we can go. I assure you, he's trying. He's very much trying. And they're running too. So we're going to get ready to send these boys in to do some killing. The E marksmen have done their bit. You can just lay arrows into him for all I care. I don't mind if uh, Zhou Jing loses some people to friendly fire. That's not my problem. And we're going to speed it up as we start the killing. Now we're just going to get involved in killing these people for the free XP. Um, eventually I'm going to send Liu Bei over here to chase him down so that uh, he can get some experience points from that as well. But yeah, axe band away. Oh, he's got 17k. That's, uh, that's going to be a tough one <laughs> for Liu Bei to deal with. So maybe I'll just wait for these guys to die and then um, we'll exit this battle. It doesn't really matter whether you kill people off <clears throat> like it does with Sun Jian or I mean less so with Cao Cao but still it helps a bit um, just because he doesn't get any real bonuses from it and there we go didn't lose a man There we go, and what we want to do is employ him. He's not a bad commander, he will be useful for us. Um, he has a pretty decent retinue as well, and we don't have any real soldiers. So we're going to employ him. And we're going to take the unity and the money because we didn't lose any men. And there we go. That is the first mission complete. Now, second mission. Liu Bei rallies volunteers to the cause. While you have no lands to call your own, there are many who feel as you do and seek a leader to follow. You should recruit them and swell your numbers. So we need to have six units at the start of a new turn. We currently have five and we'll get a thousand gold. And Liu Bei visits his mentor, Lu Zhi. Your longtime friend and mentor, Lu Zhi, is always asking to see you. Having spent the last few weeks selling sandals in a nearby town, you decide to take time to visit him, and we need to go to Henei, which is a little walk away, not too far. Thank you for that, yes. Now, Liu Bei, of course, has the... Um, militia cost reduction and if you can see here he's actually paying zero upkeep for these militia he's only paying for the saber cavalry and the e marksmen because they're proper soldiers so don't be afraid to stack him out with basically militia and this chap as well when he comes in don't be afraid to hire him as well because he's not a bad bloke to have right Let's head off towards Hernay. And I'll see you next turn. And on turn two, because we recruited those extra units, we've been given an extra thousand. This is good because our income is not wonderful. You can supplement your income or at least stop the outgoings uh, being so high by replacing some of these guys, your Sabre Cavalry or your Yi Marksmen with Militia, because of course the Militia are free. They have zero upkeep. However, Militia are not as good as they used to be. Um, updates have uh, reduced their effectiveness. So you're going to end up replacing your Militia with these types of troops eventually anyway. Personally, I wouldn't do it. If I were to reduce some of them, I'd probably take out some Sabre Cav. Um, just have one lot of Sabre Cavalry. But uh, like I said, I don't really see the need. It's up to you. Now, the next thing we're going to do is ignore this. Unless there is someone who you really fancy... Don't bother, because Liu Bei has his own people coming very, very soon. Now, what we want to do is recruit Bu Xiang. 
All right, they don't get on, but Bu Xiang is not a bad commander. Were he a bad commander, I wouldn't have employed him. We might need him for fights coming up. In fact, I know we will need him for fights coming up. So employ him. He's got his axe band. That's absolutely fine. He doesn't really need anyone else. And we just want to sort of edge forward a little bit until... There we go. Liu Bei visits his mentor Lu Zhe until we get this popping up and the treasury of 1000 just for showing up. And we want to stay near this border here as well because this is where the looter army pops up, which we're gonna have to kill, as it says here. Lu Zhe invites you for tea and you speak of many things. He requests your service help him rid the region of bandits and rebels. You gladly agree and he sets you the task of defeating a group which has been terrorizing the local area. Ying Jing, this, Ying Jin, sorry, this chap right here. So because we crept up along that area, what we're going to do is rock up, smash this army. It's not a fight where we need to worry too much, but I still suggest fighting it yourself just to keep the casualties down. You are in a tough situation up here and things get gradually worse as the Jiang brothers start to conquer the Northeast. So the more men you have alive, the better your chances are of escaping these first few turns in a strong position. So yeah, I will see you in the battle. Right, he is just archers. This is not going to take very long at all. What we're gonna do is shift our cavalry up around the flanks. These boys are gonna run straight up the middle. He has a tempered deflection, which is quite handy because we're going to be using these two to irritate the archers and give our cavalry a level of protection from their arrows because hopefully they're going to focus on these boys rather than my actually dangerous going to kill them all troops. So, damn it, they are in fact going for them, but that's fine because that means they haven't noticed these chaps who are going to come out here. You boys, you're already being shot at, so rush in. Now, they're not bad against um, missiles because they've got their shield and stuff. So, you know, it's not the end of the world that they're being shot at. Go on, you can focus on him now. There we go. Here comes the cavalry. We still haven't lost a man, which is quite nice. They're all moving away, which was the aim. And bang, in we go. Just need the next lot. And bang, in they go. Though they caught the other ones as well. Liu Bei, if you wouldn't mind chasing. You boys, if you wouldn't mind chasing. Right. Does slightly annoy me that people are not very good at chasing in this game. We do want the kills because we do want the experience. It's all about experience, that's all. Um, there's no real benefits to it. If they manage to get away, they get away. It's not the end of the world. Um, there's no Sun Gen like mechanism. But the uh, more kills we get, the more experience we get. It doesn't matter if the officer goes down or not. It's about these men. We just want that experience. There we go. Nicely done. Decisive victory. And again, we have lost zero men, which is a good thing. And we have Ying Jin, who is bright, brilliant, and loyal. So therefore worth the recruitment there. He's bloody good, actually. So, and we've completed this, and we've got an extra 1,000, which is good because we're spending a lot of money on employing generals right now. But, you know, that's that's absolutely fine. It doesn't matter. And another is uh, mission is issued. Over T again, Lu Zhou informs you that he has an imperial mission for you to complete. It seems there have been disturbing reports of banditry in Anxi County, which cannot be ignored. He requests that you head out immediately to investigate the issue, so we need to go to Pingyuan, which is all the way over here. And it will give us 1,000 if we do it. So, Pingyuan's all the way over there, which means we've got to turn around and head back the way we came. So, go back into March Dance and start moving. Don't worry about the lost recruitment. It doesn't really matter right now. We also have a reform. Here we go. Now, as you can see, this isn't really going to help. Okay, minus eight recruitment cost. Yeah, maybe we need to recruit people, but yeah. 
We have no peasantry to tax. We have no commerce. Having this isn't going to help because we have no buildings. And there is only this for trade agreements. Because you have no real benefit over most of these, you're really left with a choice of the recruitment cost or the trade agreement. It's up to you which one you pick. For me, I'm gonna go for the trade agreement simply because I'm always gonna get that eventually anyway. Um, the earlier I can get it, uh, it means I don't have to wait when I do have a town so I can get extra income coming in. Um, whilst this, if I have the extra money, minus 8% income isn't that much of a problem. So yeah, I'm gonna get that one. But yeah, up to you for those ones because it doesn't really matter that much. And I'm going to end turn and I will see you in turn three. Turn three begins with the mulberry tree. When you were but a child, you had a mulberry tree growing in your garden. The tree was over 50 foot tall and its shape uncannily resembled the canopy of a chariot. To many, including yourself, this foretold of fame and honor in your future. However, to your uncle, this was a sign that you could cause great tragedy. So which one do you choose, the sign of fame and honor or the omen of tragedy? You either get Tranquil, which gives you extra resolve, uh, armor for your retinue, replenishment for your army, or you get Kind, which gives you resolve and authority, satisfaction and public order. For me personally, um, the satisfaction, public order, and everything else is, is much more useful. Um, this would be pretty good if uh, he wasn't the faction leader and he was just a general, but he's not, he's a faction leader. So I'm gonna go for this and I recommend you do the same. Then the Jung brothers, you hear rumors of three brothers in the Jung family from Julu County who have been gathering many followers to their side. It is said that one day while gathering herbs, one of the brothers was visited by an old man who handed them a book of three volumes, The Essential Arts of Great Peace. It was said that whoever held this book would be able to bring peace to all mankind. The group have begun calling themselves the Yellow Turbans due to the scarves they wear on their heads. Follow the story. Now, here's one of the Jung brothers. There's another one of the Jang brothers. There's another one of the Jang brothers. We're in for a fight. It is coming. That's why we need to focus on the yellow turbans. Okay. Uh, character developments. We have got, ah, uh, yes, Ying Jin is ready for fighting and we've got Kind. Now what we want to do is head back into normal stance because we should be able to get into Ping Yan's borders just, which is fantastic. We are also going to recruit Ying Jin because as you can see, his upkeep is zero because these are militia units. So why the hell not? Um, I would also suggest, because we can, again, upkeep zero, cheap militia units. Go nuts. It doesn't matter. You can have yourself a doom stack. And then we're just gonna flip back into March Dance, get inside Ping Yuan's borders. We've got a thousand back because we've completed the request. And then the rebels lie in wait for us. Almost as soon as your forces arrive in the area, you are warned by locals of a bandit force seeking to waylay you. Now you know of their position. Your advisors suggest striking for they can ready themselves in opposition. And we need to beat up Bi Jung for another 1,000. Bi Jung is all the way over here, which is absolutely fine. We don't need to worry too much about that. And we're just gonna shift up a little bit closer. There is Zhou Jing from before, and we wonder why he can't deal with Bi Zhang himself. Bi Zhang has some cavalry, it's not the end of the world. But he obviously doesn't want to do it, even with the reinforcements he'd get from the town. So it's up to us, and we'll deal with them next turn. And something I've actually never had before has just happened. The looters have decided to commit suicide and throw themselves against my army. So, we got a fight in our hands. I'll see you in there. Okay, here we are. Um, we don't know where he is. I'm gonna shift out just over here a little bit and I'm gonna have my um, chaps with their long pointy sticks out front just in case because I don't know where they are their cavalry I should be able to deal with them with my cavalry but you you just never know if they get a good charge off I could lose a lot of men 
put my ye archers right about there and let's begin this thing there they are okay so bay monster and Bushyang, you're going to take some cavalry you chaps are going to support um you hit almost as hard as Liu Bei. So you're going to come and play as well. Right, you chaps here, you chaps here. No dueling, no dueling. And then I don't think they're going to be stupid enough. Well, they have been stupid enough to charge me, but I don't think they're going to be stupid enough to go straight for my uh, G militia. So what we're going to do is engage them with cavalry how can we not see them we know right where they are no it looks like they are that stupid they really are that's absolutely fine they can go for the smaller g unit not the end of the world you chaps can go and support over there you can go in here and we are going to lose some units for once but that's just how this one goes what we don't need are our archers helping they're going to kill more of my men than the enemy so you boys can fall back with the infantry support. This fight is going to go against my cavalry unless he can go and deal with that officer. You're dealing with them. Fine. So you can head over here to deal with them as well. This team militia has done quite well considering they were newly recruited. I know they were charged head on, but still they have held. These boys are in there just to uh, shake things up a touch. Go on, get stuck in. You're melee, Cav. Be melee. Right, and there's nothing else for it. We just speed it up and we let the dying commence. Now, we do want to try and kill as many of these cavalry as we can, but they are going to get away, their cavalry, um, unless they sort of become unbreakable and stay until death, which they are not going to do. Uh, as you can see, they've already started to run. They're going to get away. You know, this army is probably going to survive. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. We'll do our best to kill them. We will. Um, but, uh, yeah, it is what it is. Come on. There we go. You chase them. Right, you boys can come and play over here. There we go. Right. Oi. You may be a strategist, but show some gumption ah, this fight is back on eh well get back over there then lads and yes we just need this boy here to die because commanders can be difficult to kill off even though they're not particularly good um, at fighting they just have a knack of surviving um, they're not quite as weak as you'd expect but anyway get this fight over with how are you doing you're chasing them off you've actually caught them that's not bad if we could stay on him that would make life easier possibly kill his are oh, we if we killed his horse no we haven't killed yes we have killed this horse fantastic news right you may chase them everybody else just focus on killing him no, they've got away. That's absolutely fine. Stand, men, stand. I know, I know you've shaken. There we go. It's over. Let's not worry too much about everything else. We're not really going to catch them. So we lost 165 men, these boys have been wiped out. Feared, disloyal and relentless. This is an example of someone we do not need to hire. So we can release him for income or we can execute him. I really do not recommend hiring this chap. The disloyal is the bit that does it for me. Feared I quite like, relentless I quite like. I prefer them in a vanguard than in a champion. Um, and disloyal, sod off. I'm gonna release him, uh, we're gonna take the money. Uh, Lu Bei is going to do his victory dance, and they're going to run away. And I'll see you at the end of the turn. Okay, so turn four, and we have the updates about people declaring war on looters that we expect. 
But we have beaten that army. We beat them during the end turn phase of turn three. So we've already been given our thousand for completing that mission, even though they still survive. And Han Fu has called us for aid. A letter arrives from Han Fu, a local lord. It seems that he has been having trouble with rebels in his territory. He asks that you come to his aid, and in return, he will recommend you to the Imperial Court for promotion. So we need to move towards Borhai, and we will get a thousand. We also have this. The excellent student. As a young man, your mother had sent you to study under the great scholar Lu Zhu. However, you were far more fond of carousing with music and hunting. One sunny day, your friend and fellow student Gong Sun Zan asked you if you wanted to ditch lessons and go into the village. So you can either study with Lu Zhu and uh, you become better friends, or you can go get pissed uh, with Gong Sun Zan and follow the story and become better friends with him. Personally, um, I'm a big fan of Gongsun Zan, uh, so I always go with this. Luja sounds a little bit boring to me. Um, so, but either way, it doesn't really matter. It depends on which relationship you want to uphold. Gongsun Zan obviously doesn't have his own faction. Uh, Luja does. Um, Gongsun Zan can be hired in the game. Luja, you have to sort of defeat him, or he needs to be defeated and uh, end up in the recruitment pool. So, actually, probably strategically, this is the better option. Uh, but I like Gong Sun Zan and it doesn't really matter either way. So I'm doing him. Now we've been asked to move towards Borhai. So what we're going to do is precisely that. We are going to move towards Borhai. They happen to be in the way. So they can clear off. There's 22 of them. It doesn't matter. Bye bye. Lost six men. We got a lot of money. And the loot has been destroyed. And we just keep on going forward. We can also upgrade our boy here. Uh, Mighty Knockback or Clarity. He's not going to be an administrator. Though I do like Line of Sight. So I'm going to give him this. Right. Chengong is quite interesting. Uh, Joe Tai is very interesting, but uh, I don't see the point in spending the money, so I'm going to ignore that. And we have a brown thoroughbred, which I'm sure will be useful for someone important in a bit. And Ying Jin, what would you like? Guerrilla deployment, uh, fire arrows and stuff all the way over there. You're more of an administrator type, it has to be said, but I need you to fight because it'll be a while before we get a strategist as Liu Bei, unless we get very lucky. So, yep. Yeah. We can focus on that for turn four, and I'll see you in turn five. And with turn five, we're met with this. Gifts from Liu Duran's father. While a student, you studied with a distant kinsman, Liu Duran. Knowing of your poverty, his father treated you like his own son, and often offered you gifts of food and provisions. One day, he handed you a large bundle as a gift for you and your mother. So do we think how to repay him and get charismatic, which is plus 12 authority, plus five satisfaction faction wide and plus three public order. We don't need to worry about the increased ambition or accept it humbly and follow the story. But we get plus two resolve, plus six authority, uh, plus 10 satisfaction and a treasury of 1000. Now, this is really your choice. Do you wish to focus on the faction wide satisfaction and the public order? Or do you want to focus on um, some money, basically? Uh, the authority bonus is huge for this as well. Uh, for me, personally, I'd ignore the story and I'd go for this. We don't really need the 1000. Graffiti. As you walk through a local village, you see three men in the town square. They are tied to blocks and the headsman stands above them. Their crime was spreading graffiti, promoting the yellow turbans around the village. Things seem to be getting out of hand with these yellow turbans. The standard sign we get, and we know what that is. Now, we do not actually wish to enter Borhai just this turn. We want to get to just about there. And we're going to replenish for a turn. Because our boys are hurt, we don't have the greatest replenishment in the world and we are going to be fighting some bandits next turn. So, seems a slightly boring turn, because it is. Just sit back, wait for one turn, and in turn six, we finish. See you in turn six.
And with turn 6, we get this. Liu Bei has a lot of these at the beginning. The Fighting Man. While you are not studying, you often spend time in the company of local youths, as you love to box and were considered to be the best around. As a result, many younger people, impressed by your strength and agility, began to follow you around and ask to become your followers. So you can either accept them, and you get the Fraternal uh, trait, or you can be a Lone Wolf and get the Brave trait. So this will give you uh, plus 6 morale um, when commanding and plus 12. This will give you a uh, plus 8. Now, all of this reduced penalty and desire from higher office is no real use for Liu Bei. Um, but morale when commanding is quite nice. So I personally would do that. Tang Zhuo defects. A yellow turban officer, Tang Zhuo, has seen the error of his ways and surrendered to the Emperor. He has implicated others in the plot, who have been swiftly dealt the Emperor's justice. It seems the yellow turbans are planning to strike against the Empire. Yes, we know. Follow the story. Character developments, Sun Qian, we do not need. We have a strategist. These two have become friends, which is wonderful. And traits gained, we have become brave. Now, like I promised, we need to move in here. And there we go. Han Fu has called for aid. We have answered and we've been given 1,000. And Liu Bei strikes a powerful blow. It seems the rebels in Han Fu's territory are of a different nature to those you have met before. They wear yellow scarves around their heads and claim fervently that the end of the Han is nigh. Such sedition cannot be allowed to go unpunished. Yue Yuan. Ooh. So these are a sign of the first yellow turbans that Liu Bei will be fighting. That's the army there. Let's deal with them. So we heavily outnumber them. It's going to be a little bit of a fight. I'll see you in it. OK, so here we are at the Battle of Bohai. Um, now you can see, here's our enemy, Yue Yuan. Now they did say that these people were wearing yellow scarves and they're different from the other losers we faced and yada 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 yada. But, they are not. Don't take what they're saying that seriously. They are supposed to be a uh, growing yellow turban, rebellion, threat, etc. But, they're not really. Um, anyway, I've laid out my army like this. Uh, they've got a lot of spears. I've got my saber militia ready to take them head on. I've got some spear, well, G militia ready to flank to support my cavalry because my cavalry is heavily outnumbered. Um, and I've got my axes ready to do some flanking action. And I've got a lot of archers. So uh, let's make sure that my people are not dueling because they're not up to it. And let's see how this army wishes to die at my hands. Now, he doesn't hit particularly hard, which is quite nice. Doesn't seem like they wish to advance. Absolutely fine with that. If they want to stand there, they can stand there. I would have thought, as they had no missile troops, they would want to uh, take the initiative. But no, they don't seem to. Now, these are only mounted lance militia, but they will do a ton of damage if they can get a charge off against any of my troops. Um on the flanks or not in formation. So I'm going to take it a little bit slowly as I move up, just in case they decide to advance really quickly. And we're still pretty good. Keep creeping up, keep creeping up. We'll be in range very soon. Still not going to move, eh? Right. See if we can get in range with this one. Not quite there. And a tiny bit more. Right, here we go. The arrows are going in. At their G infantry. Um, uh, let's uh, just a tiny bit further. Tiny bit further so we can get all the archers going in. Um, now, if you wouldn't mind just laying it into these archers, uh, into the, the um, militia here, who apparently still don't want to do anything. Wow. Right? If that's the way they want to play it, that's the way we'll play it. They're going to die. You're allowed to come and attack me. Yeah, yeah. There we go. There we go. Right. Focus on them. 
go support you boys. Right, ship to that flank. You chaps, head over there. You go support. You chaps over here to support. Axes, get a charge off. Big man, are you ready? Because you're going to be the flanking unit here. Go, go, go. All right. Uh, my archers have got slightly out of hand here. Head back. If you wouldn't mind also heading back, that would be fantastic. Um, you can head forward. Axes, go. Swords in the front. We've got two lots of swords left in reserve. You chaps can go support the cavalry over here. Um, probably going to need some swords in reserve over here and some chaps over here. You guys have done a number on them, so... I suggest moving over here. Cav over here as well, just in case. Lots of arrows at this cavalry unit, please. Make sure they don't come back. Come on, come on, come on. Right, you're going to have to get in there, support them. You're going to have to hold them. Damn it, I have some people running already. That's fine, though. Right, get in there. Right, and you boys in their back. And you boys are heading off over here. How are we doing, Arrows? We're doing good. Right. They're running away. Um, go kill. Go kill. You chaps in the back here. You boys can pull out. Hmm. Yeah. You're going to have to go in here, boys. Uh, you can support him. How are we doing? There's not much I can do to support you there. You're just going to have to do what you do best, which is take hits. Hmm. Right. More arrows into them, please. Liu Bei, if you wouldn't mind, don't die. You've done what you can. And that was embarrassingly little, it has to be said. Um, but your embarrassingly little is... Still better than nothing. Those cav are in trouble. You're going to need to fall back here. Over here, boys. Into them. Right. You lads. Let's take him out. Do you know what? Go kill him with your swords. How are we doing? Bay monster. If you wouldn't mind... Oh, he was just about to flee. I thought we had it. I thought we had it. We don't. Get out of there. Get out of there, Liu Bei. Get out of there, Liu Bei. Tell you what you could do, though. Bay monsters can chase them. You boys can head in there. You can support Bayzilla. That'll do the trick. Um, You want to head back. How are we doing? Let's have an archer line over there just in case those cavalry over there feel the need to chase me. G can now focus on him, which is going to help a lot. Basil is killing them. They're dying too. Nice. Right. Okay, he's finally running. That's fine then. That's fine. We don't need to worry too much. If you can continue to chase him, I need you to come back. You are weak as. Right. Go up there to support. Um, yeah, you're killing them. You're killing them. That's all good. You're killing them. Sweet. All seems to be going my way. And there's the victory. Righty ho. Well, get back to killing some of their infantry. You focus on him. You boys chase them. You've got them. You've got them. You know just shoot the crap out of them. To be fair, you're not going to catch them. So get some arrows off. And... I reckon we're going to be good to go. Yep. We'll call that decisive victory. So, yeah, I've lost 400 odd men. That's all right. That's all right. We are probably going to start to take some replenishment now because my army is a little bit weak. 
But there we go. Liu Bei has struck a powerful blow and been given a thousand for the privilege. And we have beaten Yue Yuan. And this has sparked this, an oath in the peach garden. Whilst ruining the chaos in the empire, you met two great warriors, Zhang Fei, as strong as an ox, and Guan Yu, a man of great prowess. Fails to mention the drinking habits of Zhang Fei um, and uh, Guan Yu's sheer arrogance and inability to get on with other officers. But hey, in a peach garden, you swore a solemn oath. Though born of different families, we swear brotherhood. We shall protect one another, serve the state, and save the people. We do not seek to be born on the same day, but we do seek to die together. May the heavens smite us should we turn away from the righteous path. And of course, they did not die on the same day, and the heavens did definitely strike two out of the three brothers, because Guan Yu and Zhang Fei had some pretty horrific deaths. However, they are the heroes of... Romance of the Three Kingdoms, so I can't be too mean to them. Uh, but we now have Guan Yu and Zhang Fei. Bang, there they are. And the last thing I will say now before I end turn is, as you can see, we now have three armies. And it's only costing us minus 50 per turn. Do not, do not under any circumstances uh, throw uh, these guys together into one army. Don't. Keep them as separate armies. You now have three armies. Each one of these chaps can lead an army really quite happily. Um, have a look at their skills. Spend them as you wish. I really love Scare um, as a skill. We also have a nice shiny horse that we can give to Guan Yu. You'll notice as well they don't have their cool weapons yet. Um, they will all come later. Uh, yes, I forgot Zhang Fei is less um, highly skilled, but he also has a stone pig. So yeah, you can see he has a great axe. Um, hello, I thought I spent that. Oh, you're giving it to me now. There we go. Um, Guan Yu has a glaive, but not his really cool one. And Liu Bei has a pathetic set of, well, one ceremonial gem. But it is what it is. Okay, so I know we're in turn seven, but I'm not actually going to do any moves in this. I just wanted to show you that you don't need to worry about not having their special weapons. They appear the next turn that you get Guan Yu and Zhang Fei. So you get this thing here, the horse merchants, and you can see that you get the Shuangu Jian for Liu Bei, the Serpent Spear for Zhang Fei, and the Green Dragon Crescent Blade for Guan Yu, which is all very fantastic. As you can see, they now have them. It's great. But... What do you do next? Well, you can see down here you have Zhang Yang, and over here you have Zhang Bao. Now, Zhang Bao has a comparatively weak army, and he's going to make a beeline over here for Anping. If he takes Anping, that's absolutely fine. But with these forces you have here, you should be able to move towards Anping after he's taken it. You hang just outside the area. Let uh, him take Amping if you want him to, or you can fight him in Amping should you wish. But if you let him take Amping, then these boys will be able to smack him and his army pretty efficiently, and you can take Amping town and farmland for yourself. That will actually just wipe out one of the brothers there in a couple of turns, which is super useful. Now, Zhang Jue will also make a beeline for this area too, but he has to also deal with Liu Yu up in the north, um, Ding Yuan as well, who eventually gets um, destroyed by uh, treachery by Lu Bu and, and, and Dong Zhuo. But he has more of a fight to work with, so don't worry too much if he comes down this way. Um, you should be able to take Anping and wipe out Zhang Bao very quickly. That just leaves Zhang Liang. After fighting down here, you'll be given a quest to take out three yellow turban garrisons, which, if you've already smacked Zhang Bao's army, is not going to be a problem because you'll be able to take uh, these two very quickly. That only leaves you with one more. Then you'll be given a task to take out Ping Yuan. So go head down here. Zhang Yang is going to be pretty easy prey as well because Zhang Bao's dead. There's no one there to support him. You should be able to take out Ping Yuan very very efficiently because he will have taken the salt mine by that stage um that will then give you amping and ping yuan to build up from uh remember lu Zhu is going to be attacking yeah so i wouldn't necessarily go and focus on that straight away um but uh you know it will certainly help with the destruction of jiang bao and jiang yang Hene 
up to you whether or not you wish to take it and use it for trades later with uh, Lujur or just take it and hold it yourself. But all of this should be able to fall to you very, very quickly, even though you have pathetically weak militia armies. Why is that? Simply because you have Guan Yu, Zhang Fei, Liu Bei, and two other officers. Even though these are three separate armies, you can hire still, whilst you have no territory, a whole host of militia for them. You don't need extra officers, just fill them out so they have a six stack of militia per army, zero cost to your economy to do that. Um, so you have a decent number of troops, but more importantly, you always have Guan Yu and Zhang Fei backing up Liu Bei's main army. So you still get the benefits of having all the extra officers, even though you've got them spread out over more armies. And Guan Yu and Zhang Fei will, even on very hard mode, which is what this is on, take out armies by themselves. Very few of the Yellow Turbans wish to duel Guan Yu, even though he is only, what, level four at this stage. Zhang Fei, you do want to avoid dueling with him a little bit at the beginning, because um, he'll, he'll take some damage. He's only level two, but he can do massive damage to their troops. And they were, like, with Scare as well, which is why I was making beeline for Scare. He has Scare, uh, oh, didn't mean that. So he has Scare uh, coming up next. Uh, no, he has Scare already. Guan Yu has Scare now that we've just given it to him. So just their presence is going to instill fear. And the Yellow Turbans have huge numbers of peasant armies. So some of them will run before you even attack them, just by putting these people in front of them. Um, after that, and after you've taken Anping and Pingyuan, the Northeast is yours. You can spend time to focus on Zhang Jue because he, like I said, he's gonna be fighting this guy up here. Um, so you can come up behind him, smash him, take his land. And remember, you'll also have Huang Shao starting here in Dong. Now, I personally would go for Huang Shao quite quickly because Huang Shao will go straight for you. Um, if you can take Dong, get some land over here, that's all the better. Once you've secured this and wiped out the yellow turbans very, very quickly, China's yours for the taking. There's a ton of food and money in this area, and that's what you need to start growing. But that's it for now, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you have enjoyed this. If you have, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe for more. We'll be covering every one of the factions eventually. Uh, and also, if you think other people could benefit from this, please feel free to share it as well. I've had a number of retweets on Twitter, and that's really boosted views for some of these videos. So yeah, thank you very much to anyone who has done that. Um, links to my Twitter are in the description below. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for joining me, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.